Have you ever started something you're a little unfamiliar with or a little bit rusty at and are like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll never reach my expectations. I'll never be good at this. Ah. Yeah, welcome to being an adult. Hi, I'm Salome, and as a self-proclaimed perfectionist, even though I'm an artist, I, like many of us, still panic slightly when doing anything outside of my comfort zone, or staying inside my comfort zone because that's bad or something. Ironically, my comfort zone is constantly changing what I'm doing and not being very focused, but the thought of putting down my watercolours and actually really pushing myself to make a good attempt at a gouache or acrylic painting was actually a little daunting, but maybe it's the pressure of publicly showing it on a YouTube video. So I'm here to dash any expectations of artists somehow having it all together, and I'm going to be learning right here, right now, how to paint with acrylic gouache. To be clear, I have used acrylic gouache to make a finished painting two times, but they were posterized kind of cell shaded flat paintings, not a naturalistic landscape with layers and details. So I've done my prep in a previous video, some swatches of acrylic versus traditional gouache, some thumbnail gouache paintings in my sketchbook, and a little thumbnail colour test to choose which paints to use. So here we go. So here I'm starting with making my paint palette. I jerry-rigged this day wet palette out of some absorbent paper and palette paper in an old IKEA tub full of screws or something and I spritz it with water now and again and it works pretty well. I tried to use a limited number of colours to create a coherent palette for my art, but I always end up using more than I really need to. I think nowadays I find convenience is more important, but I would like to do some more limited studies where I have to focus on mixing my colours so I don't get rusty. But if you want to know how I choose my colours, I normally start with a split primary base and add earth tones, then colours I might specifically need a lot of. I don't want to mix a colour then run out and then have to mix it again as it will never come out the same exact original colour. In this piece I can see I'm going to use a lot of navy blue and dark violet colours. I think I even have just a tiny bit of black because I actually want to have a slight hint of desaturated dark shadow that looks a little surreal. Looking at my sketch I want to start in the background and work my way forwards. I won't have to worry about the edges of my sky because I can just paint the rocks over it. One of the advantages of opaque paints over watercolours. The sky I also feel is going to be the trickiest section, so I want to get it out of the way. I made a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy for myself here as it was the hardest to get to look right. I made the mistake of following my reference too closely but I didn't want to give myself too many factors to worry about on top of using new paints and the subject matter I don't usually paint. This kind of resulted in the top right of the sky feeling very out of place and not very cohesive. It's a shame because I really enjoyed capturing the dark shadowy clouds and the different blues of the light poking through. I found it easier than I thought to adjust from working dark to light but I think with a bit more practice it will be no problem. But now I'm noticing I'm getting confused with my watercolour painting though, so oops. <laughs> with more opaque paints I like to use a flat brush to get nice painterly brush strokes and feathery blending, which is perfect for clouds. It helps in both the nature of fast drying paints like acrylics, when you only have a small window of time to blend. Looking at the darker clouds now, I'm so glad I chose these paints. The dark velvety matte texture is perfect and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I hope that with time I can practice and I can iron out the kinks and produce more cohesive paintings. In retrospect, if I did this painting again, I would approach this part differently. It's helpful to reflect on your pieces during the process and after, but crucially don't beat yourself up along the way or you'll just get too frustrated. My best advice is, if you aren't sure, sleep on it. Come back the next day and take another look. Perhaps you missed something that you could use to make it work. Maybe you need to make small adjustments or either paint over it entirely. Is it specifically the colours, the composition or the tone or something else that's off? I could tell I wasn't having a good time in the section while I was doing it, but I decided to trust the process and figure out how it felt in context when the rest of the painting was more complete. 
In the context of the reference, this part made sense, but as this painting, I would have changed two things, the colours and the composition. I could have improved it at this point and made an educated guess. But that's the painting process for you and how you approach it. Another way would have been to work in layers over the whole piece rather than finishing it in sections. That way you get a more cohesive piece rather than one that risks different sections looking out of place. And that's one way this could have worked better. However, for myself, I needed to keep this in mind while also having the experience to know that in general, I work better in sections. It's an approach which can make things quite hard, having to keep in mind all the other parts of the piece while working on one and then somehow trying to bring them together. But if I work in it all in one go, I get even more lost. I end up trying to work on all of the pieces together and end up with a completely incoherent rushed smush. I just need to be able to focus, that's the main thing. So for you it might be completely different, so I recommend doing some experiments to see how you work best and try looking at other artists' processes. I made a conscious decision to sort of let this part of the painting go wrong because this is a learning exercise. I don't want to let my anxiety about it take over and blindly change course. I simply adjusted it a bit as I went along rather than trying to start over and make any big decisions now, as the best time to do so is before you've even started painting. But now I have the advantage of knowing and highlighting to myself that this is something I need to plan for in the future, and if this was a finished piece, I'd go back and paint over it to tie it into the painting after I finish the rest. Paintings have ugly stages which don't feel right and just need to be worked on and built up. Trust the process. You can't second guess yourself all the time or you'd never get it done. It's about balancing the problem solving process and criticism with having confidence, fun and conviction in your ability to learn. There will be more paintings and more opportunities. I think as adults we tend to be overly self-critical, which can sometimes get in the way of learning new things or improving. Our expectations and tastes have matured, but our skill level and execution doesn't always match it, which can be very frustrating. It's easy to forget the childlike ease of free creativity, making and doing just for the sake of fun. I know a lot of people find art fun and therapeutic, but I actually find it quite stressful and hard work quite often. I'm always striving to keep creating and fleshing out my artist practice, like if it becomes too fun it won't be good or something. I'd like to try and find a balance between enjoyment and being critical of my work. It's healthy to take a step back from your work and analyse it, but I often become too judgmental as part of the worry of getting the problem solving process of art wrong. As I get into the mid-ground and foreground, I'm much more into the flow of painting, and I've gotten a hang of the paints and the subject matter. Because I've not worried over the top right section too much, I put it to the back of my mind and get on with the rest. I can rely on things I already know here. The far away parts of the landscape are lighter. I put in my darkest darks and my lightest lights to have a range of tonal values. I pay attention to the colours in the parts of the light and parts of the shadow using warmer or cooler tones appropriately. What I was looking forward to in this piece was the colours, and I'm much more confident with them now, and I think I'm creating an atmosphere I was going for, of a surreal dreamlike landscape with exaggerated colours. At this point I'm not really thinking too much what I'm doing, and I think I've reached a point where I've loosened up with both my painting and what I take from my reference. Before I was too tight and unsure, using my reference as a crutch rather than information and inspiration. But as I get more confident, I can use that to create what I need to do for this painting. And this is the part of the painting that really brings it together for me. The part that works best in my opinion is the rocks on the left. If I were to go in and change the top right, I'd echo some of the colours and shapes I used here particularly the combined use of warm and cool reds and the creamy colour as highlights rather than stark white.
And with that, the painting is finished. I honestly surprise myself with how much I like it. Even though I can see the flaws, I'm not frustrated with them. It's not a big deal. Even though part of me wants to paint over it, at the end of the day, I'm too lazy to be that much of a perfectionist. I really hope that was a useful video for you, or at least you enjoyed watching the painting process. Let me know in the comments, and let me know if there are any videos you would like to see from me in the future. I'm hoping a sketchbook tour isn't too far away, but I'm still a few pages away from finishing it. Thank you for watching, um, please go and follow me on Instagram, don't forget to like the video and comment, and of course subscribe so I can see you in the next video. Bye!